This is Bob. Bob just got an email from his coworker telling him to look over an Excel file and approve the changes. Bob opens up the attachment and is confused with a pop-up that is asking if they're sure they want to run the file. Of course he's sure. He needs to approve the change. What Bob doesn't know is he just launched a remote access Trojan, a rat, on his computer that has now opened a remote connection that allows a hacker to remote in whenever he feels like. The hacker can now do whatever he wants and Bob has no clue. But how? Bob's coworker was a victim of credential harvesting and a hacker got into their email account and sent out an email with a malicious Excel file to several people and Bob thought it was actually his coworker. This is why we need cybersecurity. But what is cybersecurity? Why do we need dedicated people to just keep our stuff safe? Shouldn't that be everyone's job? My brother asked me the other day, what is cybersecurity? It caught me off guard. I honestly never thought of how to explain it to someone who legitimately had no clue what it was because there's just a lot to it. And I've been in it for so long, it just comes natural. More specifically, he asked, what can you bring to the table that a programmer can't? After all, programmers know how to make their stuff secure, right? A programmer is going to know how to code, usually in one particular coding language, maybe a few others, if they're really savvy. And well, there's a lot of coding languages. So bro, this one's for you. Hopefully by the end of the video, you can make your family proud during Thanksgiving by explaining exactly what cybersecurity is. The basic definition of cybersecurity is a practice of defending computers, servers, mobile devices, electronic systems, networks, data from malicious attacks. And that's all for the sake of protecting data. That sweet, sweet data <laughs> is the purpose of cybersecurity. The more sensitive and valuable the data is, the higher the chance someone is going to want to break in and steal it. Seems simple, right? Just defend the castle from intruders. How hard could that be? Well, considering how large the internet is and how connected everything is to pretty much everything, this has now become a full-time job. And not just one job, but many jobs. And this is kind of how I tried to explain it to my, my brother. He seemed to think that it didn't actually require to have a dedicated role for that. So let's take a deeper dive. Think of everything that goes into an organization. Let's start small. A business starts online selling hats, for example, hires their first employee. Now they have two people that have access to Pi. No, not that Pi, this Pi, customer data. Customer data can be credit cards, email addresses, physical addresses, phone numbers, etc., etc. Both people can be hit by phishing emails now, just like Bob. They're both going to be using a computer and have a phone. They can visit whatever site they want, click whatever they want, but who's going to tell them whether an email is phishing or that they're about to click a link that's going to install a Trojan or lock their computer up with ransomware. Security tools and security professionals are going to tell them because expecting everyone in an organization to know every method bad actors are gonna try and get that sweet, sweet data is unreasonable and frankly, it's impossible. These two employees are relying on their phones and computers having security built in. All the apps that they use have already been made secure by the developers who created them. But let's look at a larger organization. This organization has 20,000 employees all using computers with a company email, either on the company network or a company VPN. The company has to be ready for phishing, ready for users to fall victim to the phishing, ready for viruses that get either downloaded from the phishing or from the users visiting bad websites on their own. They also have to be ready for social engineers who are gonna walk into the business and try to access computers by being sneaky. According to a recent Google search, cyber attacks happen once every 39 seconds. So an organization has to have a robust tool set to handle that kind of volume and hacks. So there's a lot that goes into securing in an organization. And the bigger the organization, the more you need a dedicated role. Obviously for the previous example of two employees, they probably don't need a dedicated security person, but they do need to be a lot more cautious. So if they're not tech savvy, then they probably need to do a little bit of research to figure out how they need to be safe as they do stuff. Because it only takes one incident, right? Let's say you are the bigger organization. Let's break down what cybersecurity is currently and all the different fields. There is critical infrastructure security. Think water, electricity, gas lines, basically the grid. There's application security, which is every application that anybody ever uses on their computer or on their mobile device. These are applications that many people use and they need to have security built in. Otherwise, someone could just pull your information out of their email, your password, and that's all they would need to start the process of, of pivoting to any other email accounts you have or any other devices. There's network security. Uh, that's the connection between your device and a website and the network connection that's between those two need to be secured. So this is important for your internet providers, but it's also important if you're a large organization that has a lot of wireless 
wireless access points, a lot of network infrastructure like cabling. You don't want somebody to plug a man in the middle device where they can intercept information between company computers and a website. Last but not least, there's the Internet of Things security. This is a very quickly growing field. We're putting internet capabilities into fridges, microwaves, your toaster, everything is getting on the internet. So if you're not careful and say your refrigerator now has access to Amazon and you can click, oh, I need some milk or, oh, I need to order this dry food and you have your internet and you have your credit card attached to that. If somebody breaks into your fridge because it's accessible from the internet, because it's connected to the internet, then they have an opportunity to access maybe your PayPal account or maybe your a direct credit card. That's not to say Amazon isn't secured, but this is an example. So it's no longer good enough to just put up a firewall and expect that to ward off the bad guys. It's no longer good enough to expect programmers to be the be all end all security that is needed in an organization. You need to have dedicated people who are monitoring things and they need to make sure that the tools that are in place are going to secure every single cog in the machine make sure that they're working close to 100% of the time. And if they're not, they have alerts set up to let them know when it's not working. And if a bad actor does hit the organization, then it's important that they react as quickly as possible to make sure that they don't access any pie. After all, it only takes one security breach for an organization to lose everything. So that's kind of the quick gist of cybersecurity. And I had a difficult time explaining it to my brother. He seemed to think that, oh, I should just go into programming. But Cybersecurity is more than just programming. In fact, programming is such a small piece of cybersecurity that I'm definitely not concerned about landing any career jobs moving forward, but he was a little confused. So I hope that helps. Please make sure to like the video if any of this was helpful to you. If this video gets 25 likes, then I will be giving away this wonderful Raspberry Pi that I just discovered. It's, it's a good starter pie. Uh, I'm gonna do an unboxing about it. Uh, relatively soon here. As soon as I get it, I'm gonna have that second available. Then I'll know what it's capable of and to qualify for the giveaway, if I do get the likes, you have to leave a comment down below. It could be anything, maybe something in the video you liked or maybe you had a question. Um, you also need to be subscribed. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Oh yeah.